Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at some upgrades to my ham radio motopoda setup. So this video is provided for entertainment value and it's not meant to be a definitive guide on how to do this or what to do. I'm just showing you guys what I'm doing so that you can kind of get a feel for what works for me. So those of you who follow my channel on a regular basis probably saw the video I posted a few weeks ago where I went out and did a Moto Poda activation with the, the motorcycle here. If you missed that video, I'll leave a link somewhere up here down in the description. Anyway, the antenna that I used for that activation worked great. It was my 20 and 40 meter Pacific antenna trap dipole, but it was kind of a pain to set up and I didn't have a lot of time that day. So I ended up getting home later than I wanted to. So on the way home, I started thinking about new configurations for antennas that I could use on the motorcycle that would be a little bit quicker to deploy. Now, if you haven't already noticed it, on the bike back here, I've got a couple of ham sticks mounted so let's take a closer look at those antennas, see what they are, and see how I've got them mounted and configured on the bike. So I ended up going with the Shark RF five band hamstick kit. So I've never done business with Universal Radio before, but I found that they were by far the lowest price on this antenna kit. So I ended up ordering it from them and it came quick, no complaints, everything seems like it's in order. So here's a closer look at how I have things set up. You can see here's the antenna here. I've got it attached to this OPEC or OPTEC uh, clamp mount that I also ordered with the antenna kit from Universal Radio. And you can see I've got it clamped to this bar that would normally be used for the side bags that I have for this motorcycle. But I never use those, so I figured I could clamp to this bar without any issue. So I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there is a piece of rubber tubing in there to kind of build up the thickness of the bar so that the clamp will hold it nice and tight and also so it won't scratch the powder coating that's on here. So you can see for radials, I've got three wires just alligator clamped to the base of the antenna mount. We'll take a closer look at those in a minute. Now these are basically just 14 gauge wire that I crimped on some alligator clips to. I'm gonna go and solder these later tonight just to make sure that they don't fall off. But this is a nice quick way to kind of connect up the radials. So I went with this configuration so that I can just wind these up and quickly throw them in my tail bag and then when I stop, all I have to do is unwind them, spread them out, and then clip them onto the base. So far from the testing in the yard, they seem to be working well and doing what I expect them to do. Of course, here we have the coax connected to the SO239 to feed the antenna. So you can see I've got an antenna on both sides of the bike. Now, of course, the goal here is not to use these while I'm riding. I don't have any kind of Bluetooth setup in my helmet. And just quite frankly, I don't really want to operate while I'm riding. <laughs> so really the whole purpose of the mounts here is a way to transport the antennas on the motorcycle because they are quite long and there's no way to get them in a pack or, or strap them to the side or anything like that but also to have a mounting point for them so that I can just quickly hook up to them. I don't need to deploy anything other than the radials once I get to wherever it is I'm gonna go. So of course that means I'm only ever gonna use one antenna at a time. And also when I get somewhere, I may even take off the spare antenna while I'm not using it just to make sure that it doesn't detune or distort the pattern any more than it might already be. Or I could leave it there and just quickly swap from one side to the other. All I have to do is swap the radials and the coax over to the other mount, which is identical, and I'd be good to go. So once I get to a park, I should be able to set up in under five minutes. All I have to do is connect the coax to whichever antenna I want to use, clip the radials and string them out, and then set the radio up with my battery and go to town. So a couple more things to mention about the antennas. First off, they're far enough back on the bike where they don't interfere with me getting on and off the seat. Of course, I can't have a passenger on the back, but I don't ever do that anyway. So a couple more things to mention about the antennas. First off, I did get the five band antenna kit. So that came with 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter antennas. Now, so far I've got the 20, 40, and 80 all tuned up pretty well, according to the analyzer anyway with this configuration. Now, I probably need longer radials for the 80 meter antenna. It didn't tune up quite as well as I would have liked, but I think it'll be usable in this configuration. And maybe at some point I will make extensions for the radials. Now, the 10 and 15 meter antennas, I did try to tune them up and they weren't quite getting there. I think maybe I need shorter radials for those or maybe just a little more patience. Now, but for right now, I'm not real worried about those two antennas because those bands have been fairly dead lately and I usually stick on 80, 40, or 20 anyway. So I think for now, this is gonna work just fine for me. 
and I might have other configurations for those antennas in the future. So I'll let you guys take a quick look at the analyzer readings here with the 20 and 40 meter antennas. So I've got the 40 meter antenna over on the bike first and you can see I've got the analyzer set up on 40 meters and right around 7200 or so is about where it seems best. If I tune up the band a little bit you can see sort of near the top it starts to get a little high on the SWRs and same thing if I go down low it goes up pretty quick but I think there's plenty of usable range right here in the middle of the band where I should be able to use it for sideband contacts no problems. So we're over here on 20 meters now and you can see it's pretty much the same thing I've got the SWR centered right around the center of the sideband portion of the band and if we tune up and down you can see there's plenty of usable bandwidth here maybe even a little more on 20 than there was on 40 so we should be good to go there too. So here's a look at the 80 meter antenna you can see that I've got it centered somewhere around I don't know 38 70 or so maybe uh, but you can see the lowest I can get out of it is about 1.5 and you can see the resistance is a little low so you can see if I tune off the center of the band the SWR isn't horrible it'll probably be usable especially if I bring a tuner along of some sort but you can see it's not perfect and again I think that might be because the radials I'm using are only 16 feet long uh, if I had some longer radials I think the 80 meter portion would work probably a little bit better but that'll be something I experiment with in the future so I'll go freehand with the camera for a minute just so you can see the radials. As I mentioned before, I've just got alligator clips crimped right now, but I will solder these onto the end of some 14 gauge Home Depot THHN wire. So right now I've got these cut to about 16 feet just to minimize the footprint. You can see it goes off over there about where that brick is. Um, but in the future, I may experiment with shorter and longer or maybe length radials for the different bands. But the 16 foot length seems to work okay for 20 and 40. It's marginal on 80, but we'll experiment with this and see how it does. Again, I wanna try and keep this footprint to a minimum because when I'm heading out to a park, I'm never gonna know exactly how much space I'm gonna have. So one of the things I was concerned about when I thought this up was how these things would behave on the bike at speed. Now I did take the bike out for a ride earlier with the 20 and 40 meter antennas both mounted and uh, I got up to about 60 miles an hour or so on a nice state road over here and it seemed fine there was no problem uh, they were bowing in the wind a little bit just like any antenna would but they didn't cause any problems with the way the motorcycle went down the road and I also was worried that maybe when I came to a stop the antennas would kind of shake a little bit and shake the bike but there's no issue I even did a few uh, abrupt stops on purpose just to see what would happen and kind of swerved around a little bit on the on the road just to make sure everything's still handled the way that it would normally and it seemed okay now if this is something that you're going to try on your motorcycle make sure you test all that stuff out um, you don't want to have any accidents or cause any problems like I said I was real cautious with this setup and took it slow and made sure that it was going to work for me before I decided to go forward with it. It's starting to get a little dark out here, but I'm going to grab my FT891 and just see if I can make a contact or two before I put everything away for the night. Okay, so I'm on 20 meters. I've tuned around a little bit. There are a few stations out there. Maybe I'll try and call CQ or see if I can find a parks on the air station to work. All right, have a good one. Uh, and talk to you later there at 73, buddy. God bless. All right, anyone else on the band? Ohio and Southern California, November X-ray, 8 Tango. Looks like uh, you'll see some fish and you probably have a chance to catch a few fish, and I just hope he dies in a big one, over. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it, you know, even with me, you know, people are surprised. I'll see if I can call CQ for the fun of it, see if any of you comes back to me. Now it is a Sunday evening, so there's probably not a lot of activity on the band in the first place, but I wasn't able to get anybody on 20 right now. But since I'm running out of daylight quickly here, I think I'm going to switch over to 40 and see what we get over there. Roger. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. 
Okay, so as you can hear, there's quite a few stations on the band, and they're all pretty strong. And there's only one park station operating right now. I did try to go back to them, but there's quite a pileup. I'm only running 50 watts here, so I'm not able to bust through. But I think this is going to work out okay. So hopefully in the next few days here, I can find some time to head out to one of my local parks and see if I can activate it using my Motopoda setup. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.